Hello, welcome back to Cinders! Last time we came to Madame Geed's place and we were talking about how we think Carmosa is a skank and her daughters are best when she is not around and could prove to be delightful young ladies given the proper influence. So let's continue! But for now, it's still very difficult to live with them. It seems that things are difficult for you! This woman's voice changes every episode, I'm sorry. You're not very happy with your life these days, aren't you? You could say that. And what are you doing? I'm pointing at you, giving you the finger gun! What do you mean? If you don't like your life, then you have to be the one to change it! Otherwise, anything you say is just whining. I definitely want my life to change. Then what's your plan? Hmm. Um, I have to learn more. Because this is just sitting on your ass, and that's not what we've been doing. And I have my ways is bizarre, so I have to learn more. I don't really have a plan yet. Why not? Are you expecting things to just work themselves out? Of course not. It's just that I don't know enough to form a real plan. I don't want to act brashly. <laughs> I get the feeling there's a lot more going on that I don't know about. Carmosa is acting strangely. If I could figure out what she's up to, maybe I could use that to my advantage. I'm also wondering if I could find a way to reclaim the estate from her somehow. I'm my father's only daughter, after all. There's almost always a way to bend the law to your will! It might not be very kind, though. Narrowing eyes, narrowing eyes, accusatory, lamp-waving eyes. Anyway, it doesn't seem you have a very clear idea of what you want yet. I promised your mother that I'd help you, and I will. But you yourself need to know what you want first. Come see me once you're ready to move forward, and we'll talk about your options. Did you really promise my mother you'd help me? Of course I did, girl! I have no reason to lie about that! You must get going now, though! Wait, I still have so many questions. I like how there's no exclamation points in that sentence. Wait, I still have so many questions. I have a lot of work to do, I'm afraid. I can't afford any disturbances. Shut your mouth! I'm sure we'll have another chance to talk! I'll do my best to answer your questions then! You remind me so much of your mother! And I'm sure that you'll be just fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care, girl. Bye, Madam Geed. I must admit I don't know what to think about Madam Geed after we talked. I can't tell when she's being serious or sarcastic. If she's giving me advice or just mocking me. Or both. And maybe I'm just not used to acts of selflessness. But I get suspicious when someone outright offers to help me with all my problems. Makes me wonder if they don't have some hidden agenda. Especially if it's the town witch. Looks like my mother was quite special to make such an interesting acquaintance. There's no Anne there, but I put it in anyway. A witch! Ha! Still, she seems genuinely interested in helping me. And I can be really be picky. Can, can I really be picky here? I won't be forgetting the conversation we just had anytime soon. That's for sure. Hmm. Where should I go now? Which way should I go now? It's getting late. I probably only have enough time to stop by one more place. I could go to have a little talk with Tobias in his store. I wouldn't mind heading to the inn, either. I'm sure it would be fun! I might even see the captain of the guard again. So where should I go next? I'm gonna go to the inn. Because... While I would love to know what Tobias is up to... I think that that's like the main storyline and it's going to come out on its own. And if I could see Peralt again, that would be hilarious because... Just reasons. Go to the inn. The inn it is then. Here I come, going to the inn. Ah. Hmm. Something smells delicious. I wonder what's cooking in the kitchen right now. Not like it matters. I don't have any money to buy food anyway. Why am I even here? I guess my real reason for coming was to see the captain again. I was really hoping he'd be here. He was such an intriguing man. I wish I could spend a little more time getting to know him. Ah! There he is! 
sitting in the same corner he sat in last time. Habit? Hmm. Looks like he's leaving. He won't leave when he sees these bazooms. Wait, is he coming towards me? I remember you. Your name is Cinders, correct? Yes, I'm surprised you recognize me. Well, you're dressed like a slob and you have that ginger hair. And you know what they say about gingers. Well, you were on my mind. Would you care to join me for a drink? Me and my belts? I'd be happy to. Hang on. You were thinking about me? Yes. You came to mind during a recent discussion I had with the prince. Oh, um, I'm flattered, I think. What were you talking about exactly? A candidate for wife, of course. Candidate for wife. Surely you've heard about the king's last wish. Actually, I haven't. According to the king's final wish, the prince cannot be crowned until he's found a wife for himself. So the coronation is being postponed, and every noble in the kingdom is trying to foist a daughter on him. It's been very tiring for him, as many of these women are groomed for looks alone. He was losing faith. So I told him that the world still holds many bright and intelligent women, and you're living proof. Oh, uh, well, I'm grateful for the compliment, but I'm not sure what else to say. My apologies. The drink is making me more direct and These days, there's little to do fulfilling my duties, so I spend many hours here drinking because I'm a fucking sot. Look at my belts. I don't want to bore you with the small complaints of my life. And I apologize for being so curt with you the last time we met. I understand. A lot happened, and it's no surprise that you weren't in the mood for discussion. Honestly, I should probably apologize for bothering you when you wanted to be left alone. It wasn't a bother. I found the discussion very interesting. Listen, I know you asked about the prince last time. Are you still interested in learning more? Tell me about you, Peral. Where'd you get that fancy scar? Actually, I was more interested in hearing about you. Mm, wink wonk. Me? I'm just a simple warrior. What's so interesting about me? Well, those belts, for one. Plenty of things. For starters, how did you become the captain of the guard? Well, if you really want to know, it runs in my family. My great-grandfather was a mere soldier, but he saved the king's life in battle and was rewarded. The family was granted a noble title and the position of king's personal guard. Since then, my family's heritage has been swordsmanship and loyalty to the crown. So you were destined to have this position from the start? Yes, but I accepted it with great pride and joy. It's an honor to serve the kingdom. We will always remember that the king was grateful and kind to the man who saved him. Didn't you ever think about doing something else with your life? Not once. Besides, it was not my decision to make. I don't want to be speaking out of turn, but that sounds so sad. You didn't have a choice? There's nothing sad about it. The men of my family have been honorable soldiers for ages. Or soliders, as the case may be. I was raised on tales of my brave ancestors and trained in combat since I was a child. When I received my first sword and joined the palace guard, I pointed just like this! It was the best day of my life. I felt like I could finally stand among the heroes of my family. Do you still feel that way even now? Not as much, but I don't blame my family or my path in life. The world is simply changing. There was a time when conflict meant a sword in the heart, but now it's a dagger in the back. These days, everything is poisonous words and false smiles. You can't tell friend from foe. Kingdoms are torn apart by whispers and false smiles now. There's no place for a man of the sword. All I have left is a corner in the inn and the occasional desperate lowlife kidnapping a few children. I'm not the heroic savior that my ancestors were. Perhaps you should settle down. Fuck that. You're still needed. I think the parents of the child you rescued would disagree. You still saved his life. Sure, you didn't get to charge into a glorious battle, but that doesn't make you less of a hero. There's still a place in this world for brave men. Thank you for your kind words, but you think too much of me. I'm happy I could save the child's life, but I feel terrible that I had to kill those men. They were misguided and foolish, yes, 
but they couldn't even defend themselves. It may be selfish, but I missed the days of the king. Back then I could cut down my enemies in battle. Are you saying you actually miss killing people all the time? I'm saying I miss the days when men put their lives on the line for what they believed. The people I used to fight knew what they were up against when they opposed the king. The killing may have been brutal, but at least it was honorable. 